Good morning, beautiful people. It is the 18th. Um, my anniversary is in just a few days, and I will not be able to uh, go out to a to a restaurant for our anniversary. Score! And I'll tell you why. Because now, forgetting anniversary plans isn't as big of a deal as it is before, as it was before. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just wanted to, uh, before I do the uh, morning's devotion, I just wanted to just kind of um, throw out some ideas. Uh, if you're having a problem being agitated in this time, agitated, agitated in this time, you might want to uh, lay off the coffee. It's just a, a real simple thing. We don't think about it because we get in a habit of drinking every day. But if you really feel like you're just spinning your wheels and kind of easily angered, that kind of stuff, Cutting back on the coffee will definitely help. Um, another thing that I wanted to suggest is maybe start exercising. It's really, really hard to go into an angry rage. Excuse me. To go into an angry rage when you're too tired. <laughs> so, you know, just an idea. Um, another thing, though, if you are going to exercise, I want to encourage you not to wear a mask while you exercise. Um, even if you're exercising outside, because it can cause a lot of problems with uh, too low of oxygen levels. So please be careful if you do that. Uh, make sure you're getting plenty of water, that kind of stuff. It's starting to get a lot warmer outside, so you're definitely going to want to make sure that you're, you're, you're drinking enough water. So today I want to talk about the idea that we are never alone. And I know that it might not feel like that, it might feel like we're alone, <laughs> but um, we're never alone. And there's two aspects to that. One is uh, that there's always someone and then the second aspect is that there's always God. So we'll look at that one by one. First off, we do have each other. You just don't have to be afraid to reach out. Um, people can't know what you're thinking. And if you're having a hard time, if, if, if you don't say anything, people are more than likely not going to know that you're having a hard time. I know it's sometimes a little bit humbling, maybe a little bit uh, you don't want to open up, maybe you don't want to let people know your struggle, but really it, it is for the best. Make sure that um, if you are having a struggle, don't be afraid to reach out. Let people know that, the, that there's a struggle because people are not mind readers. So sometimes we hold our spouses especially to a standard that might not be the fairest. So, you know, maybe we're having a rough day and we just expect our spouses to know us good enough to know that we're having a bad day. But that, that's not really fair for them. And you won't get the result that you're wanting either. So, once again, the idea here being uh, don't be afraid to reach out. Um, another idea is that we are all struggling. Don't feel like you're the only one that, uh, that is having a rough time with stuff or whatever. We, we are all in a place where we're all struggling. Um, so, rather than saying, you know, I've got to be the lone wolf being all lonely loner about this. Um, let, hey, let's struggle together. You know, uh, I, I'm not really available on phone too much. Um, I, I will try my best, but I miss a lot of calls. But you can always text me, and I, and I, I usually text back really fast. Um, I, I can do, like, uh, face messages and that kind of stuff. Um, I just don't do good if I can't see the person. Um, we could, uh, I mean, social distance meet? I don't know if that's a thing. Um, or uh, if you wanted to do, like, um, contact me through Facebook or contact the church. Man, you know who loves talking on the phone is Pastor. So if you guys want to talk, if you do want to talk on the phone, call Pastor. He, he loves that kind of stuff. But if you want to do any other form of communication besides calling on the phone, I, I'm totally there. Totally game. Uh, I mean, you can call me, but I don't guarantee that I'll even ask, answer. Um, and then if I don't have your number, it's guaranteed that I won't answer. Um, but don't be afraid to reach out. You know, let's struggle through this together. There's two verses that I wanted to look at. The first one is in Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. It says this, Bear one another's burdens. Bear one another's burdens. Carry one another. Um, some of us are having a hard time. Some of us aren't. Some of us are um, having a hard time with maybe this aspect of what's going on. Other people are having problem with maybe this aspect so everybody seems like they're having a problem with a different area like maybe um, you're concerned about finances or maybe you're concerned about the economy maybe you're concerned about your health maybe you're concerned about other people's health w whatever it is you're afraid of or concerned about or whatever um, I just want to want to remind you we're supposed to be carrying one another bearing one another's burdens so as you see each other struggle don't, don't make fun of each other and 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 especially with like the whole politics this is Unfortunately, in election year, <laughs> uh, boy oh boy, that's not not a good combination. But instead of instead of uh, 
getting angry with people about their political views, remember that everybody is a little bit tense, a little bit on edge. So maybe instead of you know um, arguments that really aren't that helpful, maybe instead just check in on one another. Um, I'm, I'm not saying you can't have an opinion. I, I, I'm not trying to say that at all. But but maybe it's more helpful instead of talking down to people and trying to just be heard, maybe it would be better to connect with people. Even if there's disagreements, connection is a little bit better than just simply going on Facebook and arguing about this, that, and the other thing. Uh, so bear one another's burdens. The second verse I wanted to read was in Romans chapter 12. Um, it's in verse 15. It says this. Whoops, I went to chapter 15. 12, 15 says this. Rejoice with those who rejoice. And this is the part I want to show right here. Excuse me. Weep with those who weep. Sometimes when we see uh, a fellow Christian, a fellow person in general, uh, who is having a hard time, or who is really down in the dumps, our first instinct is to try to fix it. To try and go in there and say all the right words, have all the right answers, and, you know, to make it where that problem isn't a problem anymore, or whatever. And, you know, this is really a huge mistake. First off, it'll come across kind of arrogantly, and saying off, it might just hurt their feelings. It's a much better idea to follow what Romans 12 tells us. Weep with those who weep that we connect with people who are hurting and suffering. And maybe you're not having a hard time during this, during this whole situation that's going on with the world. Fine, that's great. All the more why you should reach out to others who are having a hard time. Because, uh, once again, everybody sees um, things a little bit differently. And so rather than just telling people that they need to change how they see it, maybe you could just show them love during the time. Uh, because we are, um, I was talking to my sister, and she was talking about how people are kind of in fight or flight with this. They, they kind of see that it's um, a, a trauma in a way, and so it's affecting their, their responses and how they're dealing with, with stuff and with, with information and that kind of stuff. And so it might be best to uh, refrain from any any major discussions, those kind of things, refrain from major decisions at this time, that kind of stuff. Just, just kind of dial it back a little bit, maybe. Um, and lastly, even if you are alone, you can't get a hold of somebody, you know, you know as, as well as I do that sometimes your thoughts are the most destructive thing uh, to, to be alone with. <laughs> um, I know sometimes if, if I let myself, my thoughts just get away from me. So maybe a helpful thing would be just control what you're thinking about. Think about something else. Distract yourself. Uh, but aside from that, remember that God is always near. And I know that it sounds like, oh, well, a lot of good that does me, but if you will take the time to every day um, pursue a deeper relationship with God, then you you will find the the um, the payoff for that. Second Peter says that that with the knowledge of God comes peace. So the more you 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 know God, the more you you try to know God, uh, the more peace you're going to have. So uh, just a, a few quick ways of okay. So how do I pursue God? Well, there's a few ways. Uh, the first way. Um, pray. And sometimes when we pray, we just vent. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, we're upset about something, and so we just go down this list of all these sins that we're upset about. That's not really praying. Um, I mean, whereas God's big enough that he can handle the vent, and I'm not even trying to make any kind of theological statement, what I'm saying is pray about it. Like, God, please help me get through this time. I'm having a really rough time with this. Uh, please give me peace. Please give me comfort. That kind of a request, a request to God. Um, so pray to God, not just vent, and ask for help. Ask him to work in the situation. Ask him to, to speak to you. Ask him to, to show you new things, um, that kind of stuff. And then, once again, if you're asking for God to help you and you're asking for him to speak, the first place to start is always with the Bible. Read your Bible. Stay in the Bible. Not books about the Bible. Not somebody preaching about the Bible where you yourself actually read the Bible. And if you're having a hard time finding a translation that you understand, um, I can totally help with that, uh, but uh, I just want to encourage you in that. And then, and then another thing is, it's called praise and worship, and people sometimes ask, well, what the heck is that? I understand. So I'm just going to say it differently. Sing songs to God that you actually mean the words that you're singing from your heart. Does that kind of make sense? That, that's basically what it is. Um, and so along that, I want to just real quick finish up with some lyrics from a song by Carrie Job. It's called I Am Not Alone. And I think that it really uh, applies uh, to the situation. So I'm going to read that. Um, when I walk through deep waters, I know that you will be with me. When I'm standing in the fire, I will not be overcome. Through the valley of the shadow, I will not fear. I am not alone. 
you will go before me, you will never leave me. And then uh, verse 2 here, In the midst of deep sorrow I see your light is breaking through. The dark of night will not overtake me, I am pressing into you. And there's just something that happens when you start focusing on God, when you start um, just trying to um, trying to worship God, trying to get the attention on Him, trying to um, make more of Him, focus on Him more, and make the situation and the problem that you're starting with smaller. Um, so I just want to encourage you there, you're never alone. You always have others, you always have God. Find a way to plug in. Find a way to plug in. So uh, I hope you have a great rest of the day. And the Reverend Randall has a, another one of these tomorrow, uh, which is the 19th. So you guys have a great rest of the day. And stay, stay hip, you cool felons, you.